Hello, my name is Mackenzie Ladisaw, and I'm going to be talking to you about oak barrel tannin and toasting temperature and its effects on red wine anthocyanin chemistry. Anthocyanins are pigments of vascular plants. They're water soluble and responsible for a pink to blue color range in flowers and fruits. The pigment color can depend on several different things, such as the substitution on the B ring, pH, presence of copigments, and metal ions. Cyanins found in red wine are extracted from cell wall material during the winemaking process. And these anthocyanins interact with cell wall material as well as aldehyde, pyruvic acid, tannins, and they create new products and provides color stabilization. The larger tannins are hydrosoluble tannins found in wood. They're easily extracted by wine. Due to their chemical structure, they're known to be the first barrier against phenolinic compounds oxidation but they can actually be degraded during barrel processing, especially during toasting. Previous studies that have been conducted around this topic have really been focused on color properties of red wine aged in oak barrels or red wine aged in stainless tanks with the addition of oak chips. And these studies found that the addition of oak chips induced higher stabilization of color and various levels of degradations of anthocyanin. Other studies focused on the formation of new pigments involving anthocyanin. However, there is lack of research related to the effects of oak barrel elagitanins levels of toasting temperature on the effect of anthocyanins. This research was done to complement a previous article done by the authors that discussed the effect of oak barrel tannin toasting temperature on condensed tannin chemistry. The aim of this specific study was to investigate the effects of the level of oak barrel tannin toasting temperature on the degradation rates of anthocyanin and on the formation of pigmented tannins. Now we're going to discuss the materials and methods used for this research. The barrels used were 225 liters made from oak from French forests. They were seasoned outdoors for 30 months. So the oak wood was classified toward, according to its elagitanin content and was performed using near-infrared spectrometry. The data obtained from the NIR method was used to sort these staves prior to toasting into three groups of tannin potential. So this was low or LTP, which was less than 4,000, medium or NTP was 4,001 to 6,000, high or HTP was from 6,001 to 8,000 micrograms, of elagic acid equivalent grams of dry wood. The wood toasting was completed using radiant heat um, rather than direct contact. All barrels, so the LTP, MTP, and HTP underwent gradual toasting with a temperature increase of 10 degrees Celsius every 20 minutes. The red wines used were from two different wineries. Two were in California, and these are labeled B and CR, and one from Washington State, which is labeled CW, and both wineries used Cabernet Sauvignon grapes. Each wine used different fermentation tactics as well as aging to create their product. Now we'll talk about the sampling. Each winery took three wine samples before barreling and um, chemically analyzed those wines. After that, they were aged for three, five, eight, and 12 months. And during each sampling, they analyzed the pH, ethanol content, and titratable acidity. Allergic acid concentration was done through quantification of allergic acid released after acidic hydrolysis and HPLC quantification. So this is figure one from the research article, and as you can see, it just breaks down the oak barrel's tannin content, the toasting temperatures, and how samples were taken of each product. Monomeric anthocyanins were characterized by C18 reverse phase HPLC DAD. The concentration is expressed in Malvidin 3O glucoside equivalents. Pigmented tannins were measured by gel permeation chromatography and correspond to the ratio of absorbance. 
And then the spectrum of the red wines at the end of aging were determined using a 10 millimeter polymethyl methacrylate curvet using a UV visible spectrophotometer. The observance values of 420 nanometers, 520 and 620 nanometers were analyzed and they determined the color intensity and the hue of the wines. The experiments were performed in triplicate, so the results were expressed as the mean and the standard deviation of the experimental replicate. A one-way ANOVA had a confidence level of 95% carried out on all the samples, um, identified the differences between all barrel modalities for each winery, and then a MANOVA uh, used hosting temperature and a lagitanin content determine the effect of these factors and their interactions on the anthocyanin loss percentages, as well as the degradation rates for all of the wineries. Now to look at the results, the allergic acid concentration um, is displayed in figure two and looks at all 12 months of the wine. And we can see that there was an increase in the allergic acid concentrations up to eight months but then there wasn't anything significantly different seen from the eight to 12 month point. We can also see that after eight months of aging, allergic acid concentration was the highest in red wine aged in oak barrel rich allergic tannin and toasted at a low temperature. And then the allergic tannin was lowest in red wine aged in oak barrels and toasted at a higher temperature. Table one shows the monomeric anthocyanin um, concentration of the red wines. The concentrations found in the red wines were typical of those for Cabernet Sauvignon grapes. It was also observed that the percentage loss of total monomeric anthocyanin was higher in the CR wines than in the CW and B wines. This indicates the anthocyanin content of CR wines is less stable during aging. And then this is table two from the research article just showing the percentage loss of monomeric anthocyanins aged for 12 months in these oak barrel and it shows it at the temperatures of 160 and 180 degrees Celsius at each of the different tannin levels. And time to discuss the findings. For all the wines, a level of elagitanin showed different effect on um, loss of anthocyanins, and it proved that elagitanins in wine from barrels protect anthocyanins from degradation. The research also found that degradation of reaction follows first order kinetics, and this just proved that the higher thermolytic degradation of elagitanins from wood during toasting process reduces their protective effect against degradation. The research also found the percentage of pigmented tannins is slightly lower in the CR wines than B and CW, and this is possibly related to the highest loss percentage and fastest degradation of monomeric anthocyanin in wines from the CR winery. The research to continues to discuss that tannin to anthocyanin ratio is going to be a possible indicator of the formation of pigmented tannins. And a lack of influence from the oak barrel elagitanin levels on red wine could be caused by the loss of anthocyanins in combination with the formation of new pigments. In conclusion, this article found that there was little effect of oak barrel elagitanin content on red wine color intensity. It also found that the barrels rich in elagitanins led to slower and lesser loss of monomeric anthocyanin. And this is associated with lesser formation of pigmented tannins. And here is my reference. I hope you enjoyed learning about red wine, oak barrels, and tannin toasting temperatures. Thank you.